so excited to welcome Jeannie Peters. She's a registered dietitian who lives right here in El Segundo. Welcome, yes. Jeannie. Thanks, Michelle. And you operate a wellness center? Yes. Can you tell us the name and where Nourishing it is? Nourishing Wellness Medical Center in Redondo Beach. Okay. Well, Jeannie's here to tell us about how to ramp up our immune system during this pandemic. But before we get into vitamins, because I wanted to ask you about vitamins, if you can tell us about what we should not be eating necessarily at this point. We know there's a lot of people at home probably snacking a lot too. Sure. How does that affect our health? I think the number one thing I would say is foods that quickly turn to sugar, which are gonna be, you know, a lot of your processed carbohydrates, you know, white flour, white sugar, those sorts of things. They can really ramp, uh, they can cause our immune system to actually ramp down, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, by 50%, even just with the smallest amount. So, you know, be aware of that. I mean, you know, we all love to snack, but I think, you know, anything in which mindful snacking that's leading to foods that are gonna raise our blood sugars is gonna have an impact on your immune system. Okay, well, some experts are saying that our body actually has everything it needs to fight off COVID-19. What do you think? You know, I think that if you were eating well mm -hmm. and you're sleeping well mm -hmm. and you're getting out and you're exercising so that you're keeping circulation going and you're helping to upregulate your immune system through physical activity, um, you might be just fine. Um, so we know that there are people out there who have had COVID-19 and it lasted four or five days. It was very hmm. mild. So I think the reality is that's not most people though. Most people probably don't have the best circumstances. People are anxious right now. People mm -hmm. aren't sleeping as well as they should. But you know, ultimately, sleep, stress, who isn't feeling some stress? So those things really have an impact on the immune system. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we recommend to our clients is an app called Headspace to help them just meditate you know, for five minutes maybe or three minutes just to help calm them down and so that they have a tool to go to to help them feel All right. more empowered. Well, what should we be eating? <laughs> wow, I, you know, Doc and I recommend what we call a low inflammatory diet. Okay. So inflammation is one of the big hallmarks of COVID-19. You know, the inflammation is so much out of control in the respiratory area mm -hmm. that it's creating something called these cytokines. In order to calm that down, we're looking at things like, you know, meat, fish, or poultry, you know, preferably good quality, some eggs, uh, you know, some vegetables every day with color. So looking at trying to get as much color from both your fruits and your vegetables will really provide you the antioxidants to help to offset some of the inflammatory responses that could occur with somebody who gets exposed to COVID-19. Good information. So let's talk about vitamins. Yes. Vitamins can really help right now. I know we were talking earlier about that. So tell us about some vitamins we should be taking right now. I would say the number one vitamin that I would recommend is vitamin D because it's not an easy one to get from our food supply. And this second, or maybe the best place to get it is from the sun, but mm -hmm. a lot of people are staying Absolutely. indoors. Yeah. So they're not getting exposure mm -hmm. like they might have during the middle of the summer. So vitamin D levels that are 38 or lower, uh, 38 nanograms per deciliter, meaning your blood levels, mm -hmm. um, show a 70% chance that somebody could be more prone to like respiratory infections. Wow. So we know that getting your levels up to like 50 nanograms or higher, you know, would really help you to improve and optimize the way that vitamin D works in your body. Okay, Jeannie, how do we get those levels up for vitamin D? Yeah, I would say, you know, for, in our practice, we find, because we test everybody, we find mm -hmm. that many people need to take a supplement. Okay. So, you know, it, depending on what somebody's dose is, so if some, what somebody's level is. So, for example, if, if Doc saw somebody with a 38, he would probably put them on 5,000, maybe even up to 10,000 international units of vitamin D. And the CDC did a study in which they looked at both vitamin D and zinc, and those two combination together taken the moment you start feeling symptoms can actually sometimes abort people hmm. from actually having things go to the full on flu. So, you know, I think vitamin D would be a great place for okay. most people to start. And you have, I think, a, 
a bottle here of vitamin yep. D. Yeah, exactly. Is this something we can get at the pharmacy? Or? Yeah, vitamin D is yeah. easy. I mean, I okay. have to be honest, I was over at Whole Foods and you know, most of their vitamins are low. So you might have to go online to get this, but um, you know, Rite Aid and uh, CVS here in El Segundo, uh, not CVS, but Rite Aid and uh, certainly it has uh, vitamin D. So okay. you might be able to just find it locally. Right, and vitamin D, we're talking about vitamin D because vitamin D helps boost the immune system, right? Well, a couple things to think about. We used to think of vitamin D as a vitamin. However, now we think of it more as a hormone and it actually works as like the CEO of your immune troops. Oh. So it's actually giving direction to each of the different branches of, the, of your immune system okay. to help them upregulate so that it's able to go ahead and do its job. And the last thing I'll just say about vitamin D that's pretty impressive and that is that it actually can either turn off or turn on 400 different genes that are associated with so many different oh, issues. Wow. So Talk we know that people, CEO. yeah, <laughs> it's a really, it's, it's one of those vitamins that just does its work. One last tip and that is if you do take vitamin D as a supplement, take it always with fat because it's a fat soluble vitamin, mm -hmm. meaning it needs to have some fat in order to be well absorbed by the gut into the bloodstream so that it can really do its work. Really? So all y'all who like bacon out there, take your bacon, vitamin and yeah, avocado, eat some bacon. eggs, any of those would be great <laughs> foods to have with your vitamin D. Any foods that are high in vitamin D? Yeah, and mushrooms are, you mm -hmm. know, you can get it in salmon, you can get it a little bit of it in eggs. It's not going to be one of those ways where you're going to be able to meet your needs. Okay. Unfortunately, it's so just... So supplement is the way to go yeah. for this. Vitamin, actually, you could get it like in cod liver oil. You know, okay. A, a lot of us maybe will use that but as... I, guess, I love that cod liver face. oil? <laughs> <laughs> so cod liver oil is high in vitamin A and vitamin D. Okay. So. so you mentioned zinc, so let's go right into zinc. I think probably number one after vitamin D is zinc. All right. And I didn't have any zinc at home um, because my husband and I both love oysters. Oh, wow. And oysters, like two or three oysters will give you 15 milligrams of zinc, which is the RDA. Mm -hmm. But if you felt like you were getting sick, you could double that. So you could go from 15 to 30 milligrams. And that would really help to go ahead and give a boost to your natural killer cells a lot of your white blood count that's gonna help uh, regulate again, basic immune functions. So I have to ask you about Zycam. Mm, sure. Is that a good supplement to take, even though it's not a supplement, it's sort of like if you have a cold, people take it to try Sure, you can use cold. that. I think you know it's good for people just to have in their wellness pharmacy, uh -huh. some form of zinc so that when you do feel like symptoms coming on, that's a great time mm -hmm. to start adding zinc, like zinc lozenges. Okay. You can find, you know, they come in like all, all different kinds of flavors and you usually get about five milligrams like in maybe one of those lozenges. Mm -hmm. Just sucking on that, particularly with anybody who's got respiratory issues, that will help to go ahead and coat the throat, mm. you know, and improve just the absorption in this particular region, which is where we really want to protect ourselves, right. you know, the lungs. So also if you wanted to put that zinc into a spray bottle and you could just spray it on the back of your throat, that would also help to improve the absorption. You could do that several times a day or just use the zinc lozenges. That would be great. Well, can we take it even though we're not feeling any symptoms? You know, most of us are probably doing okay with zinc. So if you, you know, or somebody that likes most seafood, okay. um, this is some ground beef that's okay. going to be super high. Any of your red colored meats like lamb are, mm -hmm. are going to be super high in zinc. Um, oysters, I mentioned, you know, right. two of these you get. How about shrimp, lobster? Can you know they're not no? super high, but I think again, if you were if you <laughs> were feeling the first set of symptoms, the CDC uh, right. suggests start with your D and start with your zinc. If you okay. get those two right away, you can actually abort some of the more classic symptoms exaggerating and extending okay. on like the flu symptoms. Okay. Now I see you have vitamin C there as well. Yeah, the vitamin C is wonderful. So again, vitamin C is one of those things that helps to kind of slow down some of the cytokine storms that you may be hearing about, you know, on TV as it's descri described. Some of the symptoms are that people will get these inflammatory responses in the chest. So vitamin mm. C will help to slow that down because it's super high in antioxidants. So one of the things is that it actually is helping to squelch these cytokine storms. So vitamin C is one of those what ingredients. What does cytokine mean? I'm sorry. Oh, Can we an, break that down? <laughs> yeah. It's an inflammatory response. Oh, okay, thanks. It's when the body is going, it's almost like a fire that's like out of control. Okay. 
And that is one of the things that many patients are recognizing. You know, they can't keep up. They're not getting enough of the antioxidants to slow that down. So okay. think of that as squelching that sort of firestorm. So when you take vitamin C, you want to, Michelle, just focus on maybe taking small doses throughout the day. All right. So it'd be better if you end up taking, you know, like maybe 500 milligrams four times in a day. That would be better than just taking a 2,000 milligram bolus right in the beginning mm -hmm. and then not having anything more. So a supplement four times a day or can we do a supplement and a food? That would be great. I would do uh, both. Can you Absolutely. give us an example? Well, you know, any type of citrus is going to be okay. great. So whether you take lemons or, you know, right now they're in season. So maybe squeeze a lemon, have lemon water when you first wake up. Maybe later in the day, you know, around lunchtime, you could take like maybe a 500 milligram dose of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Take some lemon water in the afternoon. Finish before you go to bed with another dose. Okay. So that would really help to kind of keep your immune system because it can continue going until it reaches bowel tolerance meaning that once you get to the point where you're having diarrhea, you're probably getting oh. too much. Okay. So, you know, people could push it a little bit more, but if you're not having a lot of symptoms, there's not any reason to have to push it so far. Mm -hmm. Use it when you start feeling the first set of symptoms and that you can kind of slow down some of that um, cytokine or inflammatory All response. Right. Well, I want to talk about vitamin A. Sure. Because from what I understand, vitamin A kind of gives your white your white cells, those fighter cells, I should say. Yeah. Natural killer cells. The fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. So when you think about this as a virus, so you're looking at what are things that actually naturally fight viruses, and vitamin mm -hmm. A is one of those, has a strong affinity for the respiratory tract, for the skin, for the eyes. Mm -hmm. So vitamin A has many, many benefits, but most of us, again, are probably doing okay until we're not. So that's when you want to start looking at like, how could I maybe upregulate? Most of us need about five, um, 5,000 international units of vitamin D, mm -hmm. vitamin D a day. Um, so like animal products are naturally going to be a little bit higher. Mm. And then vegetables like, you know, this is beta carotene. This has to be converted to vitamin A. Mm. But if you were to take carrots and throw a little butter onto it, that would be a great example of a food that's going to give you a nice quality of vitamin A. So you're going to get the beta carotene. This has got vitamin A in it. Vitamin A is really rich in liver. So mm -hmm. whether it's chicken livers or beef liver or lamb liver, I know I could see by your face mm -hmm. that you're not a big fan. What but, if we don't want to eat the liver? Yeah. <laughs> what can we eat? You can eat any type <laughs> of you know dark colored meat. So again, like lamb, uh, just beef okay. or lamb, you know, is going to be also rich. All in right. So then I have to ask this. So what if you're a vegetarian and you don't eat any kind of meat? How can yeah, you get I mean, again, in? you're going to get most of yours from your plant foods. Okay. So, you know, you start looking at things like carrots and eggs. Well, if you're not, you know, if you're a vegetarian, you're probably not going to be doing an egg. But if you were, you know, thinking about the yellow or orange colored fruits and vegetables, okay. those would be great. And then if you caught, like cooked a yam or a sweet potato right. or a butternut squash, yeah, uh, now you're carrots, talking. now you can go ahead and throw a little bit of butter or ghee. Now you're really talking. Yeah. And put that on top. And that would be a great combo okay. of foods that would help to really improve your vitamin A levels in your, in your. In okay. So Gina, I, I, I brought some stuff. Now I, I do this green shake in the morning mm -hmm. and this is just so this has vitamin A, right? 784 IU. Okay. All right. Spirulina. This has like vitamin A, 6,000 IU. Fantastic. All Great. right. And this wheatgrass, 1,850 IU. Now, could I be overdosing at this point? You know, vitamin A? <laughs> you know, you're not, again, you're not getting it from animal sources. So okay. it's not likely that you're going to overdose. But you could, you know, be mindful and maybe just, you know, play with this, like those powders. You can go ahead mm -hmm. and use a little bit more or less. And um, I don't know, what's your base that I you Because i got to tell you, this is just three of like a few ingredients that I have in this green shake in the morning. Okay. Yeah. yeah and I think it's just great to rotate. You know, okay. you don't necessarily have to stick with the same thing. It's body loves diversity. Okay. It loves variety. And when it comes to nutrition, your nutrition's always going to be better. The more different types of plants or the different types of powders that you might be incorporating over the course of a week. Mm -hmm. So think of it like that, you know, so you can be a little bit more playful. How do we know if we are deficient in a vitamin? 
Well, you can test. So, mm -hmm. you know, Doc and I at our medical center, we frequently will test to be able to assess somebody's magnesium levels and their zinc levels. Those are frequently two um, levels that can be low and have an impact on your immunity. Mm -hmm. um, but there's tests that you can do that are much more expanded. They're not usually covered by your insurance company. So unfortunately, you know, you have to, um, you know, maybe seek out somebody like myself, a okay. registered dietitian who could help somebody if they wanted to know. But I've done that test on a number of people and they've been grateful because what we were able to do is toss out a lot of supplements that people were way over spending and way over utilizing and they didn't need to. So a good test will actually measure you when you haven't had anything in your system, any kind of supplements, for mm -hmm. at least a good five to six days. Okay. And that way you can see how well does your body absorb from the foods that you are consuming. And that gives you truth and is a great way of being able to assess. But are there any physical signs that we may have that'll trigger or tell us, hey, maybe we need to see someone like you? Oh, good question. Yeah, of course, there's always symptoms, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that people can look at is their nails, their tongue, you mm -hmm. know, if people get little cracks on the side of their mouth, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times those can be signs of so uh, weak deficiencies. Nails. Weak nails, hair that, you know, that maybe is quick to, you know, break. Okay. Uh, so when you're combing your hair, if you notice that you're always got 25, 30, you know, strands of hair in mm -hmm. your comb, that could be a sign that you are not getting certain kinds of key nutrients like biotin. Oh, okay. So I think, yeah, it's, those are good questions, but I definitely know the nails are one of the first things I look at. It's part of my assessment. I look at your tongue. You know, oh. I look at your eyes. I look to see if you've got dark circles under your eyes. I mean, there's certain classic signs mm -hmm. that I could go into, in, but I, I think it's just good for people to know that those are okay. beginning steps of All right. how to assess. Yeah, good to know. So we're going to be bringing home a lot more produce, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, then, and maybe and even a little bit of herbs. Herbs are great. Okay. Just, I forgot to mention about that. Yeah, just tell us about the herbs. So herbs are, uh, these particular herbs, rosemary, sage, thyme, and oregano, are what we call the aromatic herbs. Okay. So if you walk by them, yeah, you smell not, it. Yeah, I can me. smell them over here. Yeah, so and good. so those aromatic herbs have a lot of aromatic compounds that also are, can help to upregulate your immune system. All right. So snipping a little bit of this into a soup or into you know, maybe cooked vegetables can be just a great way of adding value. Mm -hmm. And you know, some of our food should actually be grown in our garden you know, rather than thinking that all of it has to come from the grocery store. So. I can't grow anything. Well, we're fortunate <laughs> because we have a great nursery here in El Segundo, and they are open. Okay. So that's the International Garden Center. All right. And so you can go over there, pick up, you know, maybe four little containers of herbs. It'll cost you maybe, you know, under 10 bucks. Throw it into a pot, you know, and then water that every day and take a look at it and talk to it. <laughs> Before you know it, you'll be snipping some of those herbs back into okay. your own salads. All right. Well, I wanted to ask you, if we bring home uh, vegetables, produce from the store, how can we wash them? Because we're all worried about COVID-19, right? Sure. And now we're bringing things home from the grocery store, and now we're worried it's on the food. So how should we wash A couple our things you could vegetables? do. You could, if, I mean, there is, if you take even just a teaspoon of bleach, you know, and you put it into a, you know, two gallon container, I mean, that is not enough that it's going to, you know, impact your immune system, but it's going to help kill off bacteria. But you could also use apple cider vinegar. Okay. So just a good apple cider vinegar, you could throw in like maybe uh, two tablespoons into like a two gallon container of water. Just let your vegetables sit in that, you know, and just let them soak okay. and then rinse them off. And it's not going to impact your immune system in any negative way. Okay, good to know. Jeannie, is there a website our viewers can refer to to just get more information about what we talked about today. Oh, sure. Um, it's the Nourishing Wellness Medical Center, so www.nourishingwellness.com. And uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions. So people can just go ahead and send a question if you're interested, and I'll be glad to answer it for oh, you. Oh, how convenient. Thank you. you and bet. thank you for being here today. Thank you. I to very, totally enjoyed oh, it. Oh, I had such a good time. You're very <laughs> welcome. And don't forget to check out elsegundo.org for all the latest and accurate information on COVID-19.